today in Burning Cash, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, education, higher education, in fact. As a mom who has three kids, two who are in college still, one in postgraduate and one in undergraduate and one who just graduated, this is a topic that is always close to my heart. And it's not just because of tuition payments. It takes a lot of effort on the part of parents and kids working together with teachers and administrators and educators and coaches and uh, your religious leaders to work hard and bring a child from the wonder of a baby and you know someone who's in your arms and relying you for relying on you for everything into a moment where that same baby is walking across a stage somewhere, graduating from high school or graduating from college or considering postgraduate options. And so when we look at dropping our kids off at school, we used to just find a good school district, find a good parochial school, find a good independent educational option. You drop your kid off, you volunteer a little bit. And at the end of the day, you look at the homework folder and you know, you're know you kind of in, in, in a almost automatic routine. Nowadays, there's so much going on in education. I've written about it in my book, Eternally Cancel Proof, that you really can't afford to be detached and an autonomon, a, automaton parent where you drop the child off and expect things to go well. You have to be involved. You have to look at every piece of paper. You have to go on the website and review the curriculum. And as your child gets older, where you're supposed to be a little more hands-off, you're hands-off with them and their teachers. You're not communicating on behalf of your child anymore, but you are still reviewing the materials because there's so much insidious, nasty, Marxist, anti-Christian, anti-God, anti-American material curriculum that is being poured into these kids. And so at the higher ed level, we've been complaining about this for two decades, but now there are some changes that I really feel like if you don't know about this, if you're not paying attention, if you're not talking to your college age kid, that's what FaceTime is for. That's what these video calls are for, video chats. That's what texting is for. That's what the GIFs or GIFs, depending on what side of that argument you're on, you're trying to stay in constant contact with them to keep the lines of communication open so you can find out if they're actually doing any of these things at your child's university. And so this story is over at the Daily Wire. They did a deep investigation. And what they found is actually actually shocking. It's just unbelievable. And it's funded by you and me. You have state universities, three of them, that are teaching students to blow up oil pipelines. And actually, it's more than three. Let me correct that. Delete, delete, delete. It's more than three of them. They're teaching students to blow up oil pipelines. And there's a book about it. You know what the book's called? How to Blow Up a Pipeline. The author wants to send a message to capitalists that their properties will be trashed. Now, the author, he's a foreigner. Um, he's a guy who he has this thing about oil pipelines. He hates them. He also hates SUVs. He's teaching his four-year-old that the best thing to do when you see an SUV is to go over and take the cap off and release the air from the tires on that SUV because, you know, four-year-olds, that's what they should be concerned with, not toys or Legos or board books. Four-year-olds are supposed to be environmental activists, but I digress because my kids just played with toys when they were four. So there are 16 universities promoting this book called How to Blow Up a Pipeline, which outlines for readers how to commit eco-terrorism. Oftentimes, these universities have made this a required reading item as a part of the curriculum. The Daily Wire investigation found that this, bush, this book, published in 2021 by Swedish professor Andreas Malm, calls for terrorism, overthrowing capitalism, and it acknowledges flatly that when these things are undertaken, some people might die, but that's a necessary step that has to be taken in order to, you know, bring about the change that's needed. So multiple state-funded universities took classes that were nominally on unrelated topics and contorted them into courses that read just four books. Now imagine taking a whole semester-long class and reading four small books written by authors having nothing to do with the original name of the class that you signed up for. This is at UC Berkeley. One example that they found there has students of geography and interactive biology being required to read the book, this book, How to Blow Up a Pipeline. This is ostensibly what students thought would be a biology course. They took that and transformed it into one on a topic called decolonization. They're using this book within the syllabus, which states that the class focuses on the scientific practice of modern relations and how the names of plants were often forged to be of service to empire building. So the lessons across the country suggest universities' support for terrorism extends beyond students supporting Hamas on many campuses. And this makes me think about a skit by SNL 
it's from 2012 and it shows a dad pulling up um, into the parking lot of a university to drop his daughter off. And she kisses her dad goodbye and says, thank you so much, dad. You've been such a great parent. I can't wait to get started in college. And then she gets out of the car and jumps into a tan, desert tan Tacoma truck and puts a scarf around her neck and starts screaming out in the you know sound of the, the terrorists always making movies. They give her a long gun and she starts shooting it in the air and she and a group of terrorists ride off to her quote unquote first class. This was a skit by SNL back in 2012. And now here we have this investigation here in 2024 showing that they're actually teaching high school. These are high school graduates who are college students. They're teaching them how to blow up pipelines, which is an act of terrorism. The lessons across the country show also that the books that they're prescribing these kids to read look to Palestinian terrorists for inspiration. They advise in the syllabus that as part of the mass resistance to the besiege Gaza Strip in the spring of 2018, Palestinians invented techniques for sending kites and helium inflated condoms carrying incendiary materials across the wall to burn the property of Israelis. So they're using that as an example of what can be done to advance eco-terrorism and create change and force decolonization. U.S. intelligence identified the book, How to Blow Up a Pipeline, as a developing threat and security risk because, quote, mom encourages pipeline sabotage and property destruction. 23 government agencies, including the FBI, warned that the film adaptation of the book, which was released in 2023, could actually spark terrorism. So wouldn't it follow that if our organizations in the intelligence community feel the book spurs on terrorism, that they would go to colleges and universities that are using it as a part of the curriculum and advise them that they are actually taking part in terroristic planning or incitement? Where is the FBI on this? Why are they not cracking down on these universities? You see them crack down on parents at school board meetings. Surely they have time for this. So the answer here is, as always, back to us. Moms and dads, we're the taxpayers, we fund the colleges. We're the parents, we actually made the kids out of our own bodies and paid for them to go to school and are paying for them to go to these universities. It's our job to put a stop to this. Turn these universities into the FBI. Tell your governor you don't want these universities receiving funding if they're promoting these books. You can find more about this story at the show notes at stacyontheright.com. For every day's program, we keep that there for you. Up next, we have Caroline Moore, Vice President of Parents Defending Education. We'll be right back. <laughs> 